and we're back <laughs> with another review and this time I'm going to talk about episode two and three since in all honesty nothing really happened in episode three like something technically did happen just ugh, whatever I'll talk about it in a bit anyway let's get into this since we are finally getting into the actual story of the show and not just recapping on what happened in the pilot live streams Q and A's Patreon exclusives and Viv's Twitter <laughs> so let's recap episode two uh we open on the hotel which look I get they changed it to be more animation friendly but I kind of don't vibe with this design like the hotel is still supposed to be falling apart and mishmashed but it's kind of too clean I don't know I just missed the charm of the other design because it felt more like new owners were building on top of it but anyway we cut to Charlie recapping what happened last episode and she's freaking out which I don't really get it's not like her hotel is on the line for anything all Adam said was they'll be back in six months he never really said if the hotel doesn't succeed in six months then we'll stop you from helping people or we're gonna kill everybody at the hotel I don't even think it was implied when they had their meeting so like what is she so upset about besides the extermination but whatever, Angel says the hotel is stupid and that people are losing their minds over the cut time and Vaggy gets the idea to take advantage of the panic and recruit more sinners, which yay, more focus on the hotel, right? Right? Well, ugh. Serpentia shows up wanting to fight Alistair. We get a hint to the pilot. Well, honestly, this whole scene seems like a nod to the pilot because it's pretty similar to the end. Like, Sir P wants to fight. Alistair has no idea who he is and a Looney Tunes him out of the way. Though this time they add the setup to the Vs since Sir P says something and Nifty, our sweet thing, asks, who are the Vs? And Alistair just says, nobody important, which I should have seen this coming, but we go straight to the Vs tower and spend five uninterrupted minutes with the V's and we're not even fully into the episode and all that happens is Vox gets a call from Velvet to come take care of Valentino and he goes on his way to do just that but he gets stopped shows us he can use mind control and can teleport his way through cameras which why didn't he do that instead of going upstairs to talk to the news people anyway he goes to Velvet's studio and she's setting up for some kind of show her dialogue about her best model is kind of confusing but we get to see Velvet's powers of making clothes out of thin air and Vox says she's got everything Everything under control which Velvet says the most cringe inducing lines ever like she was doing so good till that last bit it just seemed off I sometimes feel the cussing in the show is so weird because sometimes they add cuss words to sentences that don't really need it or put them in weird places making the dialogue sound insane but anyway we finally get to Valentino and I don't know what I was expecting voice wise but it certainly was not this Fucking finally Kitty another drink can you believe what that piece of shit did the ungrateful like I'm cool with Velvet's voice and Vox is fine I kind of thought they were gonna add an effect like Alistair but he just sounds like your typical white boy but Val Jesus what was the voice direction he's doing like 10 different accents and it's all back to back of each other like like if they were trying to have him have a fake Italian sounding accent that slipped when he got angry then that would have been fine but it's like four different voices coming out like I'm not crazy do y'all hear it too that fucking slut with some mildly entertaining hole. He thinks he can just walk in here, work. She's got this hotel and which of these makes me look sexier? Uh fuck it up. Killing Alistair is your kink. The whole time he's yelling about Angel moving out, I'm like, what is happening with the VA's voice? Stop it. Just, uh. So yeah, after trying to process his voice, we learn Vox is more in control than Val than we thought, which I'm kind of surprised by because if they're in a relationship, you'd think Val's toxic tendencies would bleed over with Vox, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Also, does anyone else feel like Val is too much of a joke this whole episode? I get episode four is supposed to show that part of him more, but people like Val are like that all the time and aren't all that stupid or swayed but either way Val tells Vox that Alistair is at the hotel and he freaks out we watch as Alistair has beaten Sir P yet was able to rip Alistair's coat sending him flying Alistair leaves to get his coat fixed and leaves workers to fix the wall Sir P blew up and we go right back to Vox and we learn Vox and Alistair fought at some point and that he's been gone for seven years connection to Lilith in bright lights right there <laughs> And we get into the first song, which is pretty good till Alistair starts up. And I'm sorry, I'm sure the VA is really good, but I just can't with his voice. It's not as animated as Bosco or Gabriel's. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair, I think he's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
Either way, the song is good. It just loses a bit when Alistair and Vox both sing. Plus, Alistair is super old school, so why does he know so many meme words? Kind of hoped to hear him use 1930s slang, but oh well. Uh, I will say the animation for the song is really good. I enjoyed the back and forth and playing with scenes. And the last part where Alistair is singing by himself is really good, though his creepy design is kind of meh. I mean, the up close face, I love. Though I wish there was more static happening, like his pilot moments, you know, just to elevate the scene a little more. Anyway, we're 11 minutes in and what I thought was going to be the A plot finally kicks into gear when Vox has the bright idea to send someone to spy on Alistair at the hotel. And surprise, it's Sir P. Because right as Charlie and Vaggie get back, he's at the door, Alistair style. Vaggie has the right idea of not letting him in, but Charlie being desperate and nice, lets him in. Angel is not for it, but does nothing. Though at least we know it's been six hours. I honestly thought it was at least three. Anyway, Charlie does a quick tour of the hotel and says how excited she is to have a real guest, which fair, but Angel gets butt hurt, which also fair, but Vaggie points out that he doesn't try and makes them look bad. So of course, Charlie is happy to have someone actually interested. We move on to probably my second favorite joke out of the whole episode where Alistair and Sir P talk for a bit and Charlie makes Sir P say sorry and Alistair burns the piece of his coat Sir P got and it honestly truly made me laugh. But we do also learn Alistair's job title, facilities manager, which I think is just fancy for maintenance man. Anyway, we finally get to see what Charlie does to possibly have sinners change and I guess it makes sense to play a get to know you game. But Sir P playing along was actually very cute. Vaggie as well. Angel of course doesn't want to play and we jump cut to Angel and Sir P doing a role play exercise, which Angel says my favorite joke of selling crack to an innocent kid while Sir P licks a sucker when he's not, <laughs> when they're not. <laughs> Uh, Angel and Sir P finish their performance and of course Sir P gives his all and Charlie is super happy and says he'll be redeemed in no time. Angel gets upset and goes to bed, which we were just outside. How is it nighttime already? Anyway, Angel watches as Charlie praises Sir P and like, okay, I get it. He's feeling underappreciated, but like he's not even really trying. Plus we're only in episode two. So like the progression is just a bit off. Anyway, we go to Angel's room and listen to him listen to Val's voicemails, which I'm trying. I really am. I understand the tone and message of someone like Val. I've had my own Val's, but the voice direction? Fill your whole fucking family. Hey, Angie. I can't. I just can't take it seriously. Good thing it doesn't last long and we follow Angel back to the lobby just in time to catch Sir P hiding a big ass camera. Like my nanny cam is better than that thing, but Angel catches him and they fight. We see Sir P's eyes in action. Very cool. And Vaggie and Charlie come into the room and look, I know I sound like a broken record, but if Angel went to bed first and listened to a few seconds of Val's voicemails and walked back to the lobby, I guess like 20 minutes went by tops yet Charlie and Vaggie walk in like it's four in the morning plus the lighting in the room isn't even any different from the lobby how does time work here damn <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sir P tries to stick to the lie that he's there to be redeemed, but Angel shows the camera. Sir P freaks out and calls Vox for help, and Vox says it hasn't even been a day and that Sir P should unalive himself, which okay, rude, but he gives up immediately and says they can kill him. And Charlie breaks in a song about saying sorry, and look, you're all sleeping on this song, okay? It's actually really good, and I love that the voice actor for Sir P is singing in his character's voice, plus I think he and Charlie sing pretty well together. Anyway, we get another good joke from Nifty and wow, so her arms and legs aren't black. Good to know. Everyone walks off. Of course, now the lighting changes when Alistair walks in and talks to Vox, telling him to try harder. Ooh, what an episode. Let's just get into the thoughts. Okay, I can't be the only one who thought the story, aka the A and B plot of the episode was lacking. Like, this is season one, episode two. We should still be somewhat focused on the main cast and the hotel. Yet we spend nine minutes with the Vs. Yes, I'm counting the song. Like, okay, I get it if they're being set up to be the villains of the season, fine. But they aren't. They don't even really come back at all. I mean, you could argue Valentino because he's important to Angel's story. But other than that, 
that, they do absolutely nothing. So did we really need to give them nine minutes of screen time to basically introduce themselves and do nothing till the last minute to have Sir P go to the hotel? In all honesty, they should have been the B-plot to the episode. I mean, it would have been pretty believable for Vox to know Alistair is at the hotel without Valentino telling him he's there. Like, the hotel has a commercial. In fact, they have two, so it wouldn't be a surprise if Vox saw it and sent Sir P to spy. We don't even really need the fight scene between Alistair and Sir P, or, or maybe we could. Like, have him show up early and have Sir P say he saw the commercial and wants to join the hotel, sees Alistair, tries to talk to him, but Alistair doesn't remember him, which gets Sir P upset, and they fight in the hotel, starting Charlie's lesson about sorry, and asking Alistair to leave for a bit so Sir P can feel welcome, which gives Sir P reasons to plant cameras all over the hotel, with the added scenes of showing Angel trying to participate to get some praise from Charlie. But Sir P is doing so well that Angel is getting more and more pissed off till he loses it, causing Charlie to kind of turn on him in favor of Sir P. Like, the episode really should have been the start of Angel feeling left out and not taken seriously and given all the other characters more screen time to bond and kind of show that Sir P actually likes being light while Alistair deals with Vox and we can still get the introductions to the V's. It just needs to be sped up a little bit. I mean, they don't really need much. I mean, Vox and Alistair arrivals, Velvet and Val don't really need to be involved. And if Vox is so obsessed with Al, then he should have been the one to find out that Alistair was staying at the hotel. He didn't need Val to tell him. Plus, I don't even buy the fact that Angel would even say that Alistair is at the hotel. Like, he had no idea who this man was and didn't even care at the end of it. So it's like, why would you text Val back that Alistair is staying here? Also, I get Velvet needed some time so we could get to know her, but I think it would have been better if she had a super quick intro and then had episode three happen, giving us an even bigger look into her personality because the time used on her introduction wasn't really needed in my opinion. But you guys know me and the whole time thing. I am counting how much time goes into the A and B plot because I'm pretty sure we've all seen other reviews say the same thing that the story and pacing is extremely fast in the show. And yes, I understand the season is eight episodes, but if shows like Invincible and Solar Opposites can do it, I think Hasbun could have as well. And don't say they didn't know they were getting a second season. They knew. Hell, the trailer even told us. Even the team themselves said they were currently working on it so no they weren't rushed because they didn't know they'd get us they'd get a second season overall the episode was fine i did truly enjoy what little we got of sir p and the hotel moments and sir p actually kind of made me want to watch more because of his silly personality the v's were okay they were what i always assumed they would be based on everything viv has said because any deeper feelings that i had for them was mostly due to the fans since the fans are the ones who made them way worse than they actually are like in all honesty I truly believe that the fans are the reason that this show has succeeded the way it has. Like, do you guys agree with that? Because I f that's how I personally feel. Oh, I also really love the animation used for the first song, but it starts with Sorry is probably my favorite. Now, as for the VAs, we got four new voices. They were all okay. Like, Sir Pinches was actually pretty spot on from his pilot voice, and I got used to it pretty quickly. Vox's voice was just again okay like it wasn't anything special or different again i kind of wish he had more of an old school tv show host voice but what we got was fine i still kind of wish he had some sort of effect on his voice since he's a tv head and velvet was also fine a little too hammy for me personally but she didn't talk enough for me to really care and this is just a me thing but i will always prefer actual british actors because there's just something off when an american does the accent like i find it funny british people can do an american accent like it's nothing but American actors doing the accent sounds kind of off or they do way too much you know and as for Valentino yeah no I, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes or if it was all some kind of joke but it was bad I'm sorry I tried I really did but the dropping of the accent sure could be fake fine but to have like multiple other accents and voices just really put me out of everything he said like again no hate to the VA but it was so bad. <laughs> 
it was almost like a joke and speaking of jokes the jokes were fine i find there was less cussing this episode or maybe i just tuned it out but but i enjoyed the more subtle jokes alistair burning his coat in front of serpentius was hilarious and the acting exercise was fun honestly anything that had more focus on serpentius was hilarious all of val's jokes if you can call them that, didn't land for me. And I don't think Vox had any jokes other than the song parts. And speaking of song parts, <laughs> I already said it, but I did really like the songs we got for this episode. Everyone did pretty well, but it starts with Sorry is it's probably my favorite due to how well Charlie and Sir P harmonize and the fact he stayed in character. And though I do like Box and Al's song, I don't think they harmonized well. And since I am currently from the future doing all of this, it seems it will be a reoccurring issue I have going forward with Alistair's VA. So yeah, I'd rate episode two a seven out of 10. And it's better than episode one, but it has the same problems of over explaining and forcing the important parts out of the way for the songs and new characters. Because having to introduce four new characters when we haven't even gotten to know our six main characters yet is just too much for a second episode in my opinion. Okay, I lied. So due to how long these videos seem to be taking me to make, I wasn't able to squish episode three's review, which ironically is longer than this video. For an episode that truly had nothing going on, I had a lot more to say than I thought. So yeah, sorry's all around. If I wasn't currently not at my house and getting constantly interrupted by my family and needing to eat and sleep, this would have been done much sooner. But yeah, also it's still gonna take some time for the review of episode three, but to help the time go by, Redesign Rosie will drop between them. Also, if you're this far into the video, thank you. But also to the select few, please stop asking if I'm going to draw Maman. I haven't forgotten, I just don't feel like it. And the more some of y'all ask, the more I don't want to do it. So just to make sure that any of y'all did hear me, please leave a green heart emoji in the comments. Uh, anywho, on a lighter note, I know it seems like I don't enjoy this episode, but I did. I had fun with a lot more than the first episode and found a few things that would have been amazing if explored more, which I'm just happy to add to the overall. But um, yeah, so win-win for me. Anyway, let me know how you all felt. I know the show has been out for a while, but it's fun to talk it out still. Uh, anyway, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and me. I hope you all have a super fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>